So weird question, have you ever thought of installing Android on a desktop? And why would you even consider that? Hey, what's up guys, Eric here. So first off, why would you consider putting Android on a desktop? Well, probably two things. First off, maybe you love, you know, Android games and you wanna be able to experience your games on maybe a bigger screen or just maybe in a slightly different way. That could be a solid reason. Additionally, you might wanna access a specific application that is on Android and not on, say, Windows 10. And that's actually the category I fall into. So I use right now Magic Jack for business for my phone system. And I have a physical phone in the office so I can make calls and whatnot to my customers. But if my customers want to text me, I can only reply to a text message on my phone because I have the Magic Jack app. There is no app on Windows or Mac, only on Android and iOS. And I currently don't have a phone or a tablet that I can just leave in the studio all the time and let everyone else use. But I have a couple extra computers laying around, so I thought, why not try to get an Android operating system on this computer. So the computer I'm gonna be using is actually this little Zotec box. It probably retails for about $150. I'll try to find a link in the description. It has some low end specs. It's nothing fancy. It's all Intel based. Regardless, now that I found the computer I'm gonna use, what about the operating system? So there are a couple developers that have worked on a version of Android for an x86 CPU. The first one was Remix OS, but unfortunately it's discontinued. Additionally, there is Phoenix OS, and I tried to use Phoenix, but I had some issues actually getting it installed. Also, it seems to be made from China, and there is a ton of Chinese symbols everywhere, which I had trouble removing, so it was a little bit annoying. But that came to the third option I found, which was Prime OS. Now, installing Prime OS was very simple. I simply downloaded the file off the internet, and then with an application called Etcher, I simply made a bootable USB of Prime OS, and then I stuck it in my computer and went through the install sequence, and pretty quickly, I was up and loaded with Prime OS, which you'll see right here. And you'll notice Prime OS, it is relatively clean. I have some applications that I've already installed, You'll see we have the Google Play Store, which is pretty awesome. But then in the bottom left-hand corner, you have a standard app tray, which lets you see you know, everything that you have downloaded. You can access settings and adjust all your settings. Wi-Fi worked out of the box. Actually, really everything worked out of the box, which I was decently surprised about. Now, in terms of the version of Android this is running, I'm not exactly sure. In the settings, you'll see about this device, uh, it just says Prime OS version. It doesn't actually say the specific version of Android, though I'm assuming it is Android 7.1, which is looking like it right here, but I'm not entirely sure. So anyway, what can we actually do with Prime OS? Well, there is actually the Google Play Store, which is pretty awesome. So I downloaded a couple games. And so let's just open up uh, Crowd City, and you'll see right off the bat, this game is not made for a tablet, a full screen device. And this is an inherent issue with Android. So it does run in this little window, but I didn't expect anything else. And I can use my mouse to navigate this little guy. I could also use the arrow keys or uh, WSAD. And performance, I'm not really dropping any frames. It's really no worse than, you know, on my iPhone when I played this game. The quality might be a little bit to be desired. You're gonna be seeing some screen tearing. Um, it does look a little bit pixelated, unfortunately. So I don't know if that's just, maybe this is a low res game. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. But what about something a little bit more demanding? So I downloaded this racing game here, uh, CSR2. Never actually played it before. So you'll see the graphics definitely are a little bit to be desired. But let's just click race and we're just gonna go into this. Now you'll notice that this game, like a lot of games on Android and mobile operating systems, etc., they're designed for touchscreens and that could be a potential problem but so you'll see i'm about to start racing but if i click f2 
10. Froze the game. And I'll actually be able to map my own buttons. So you'll see in the right hand corner there is uh, this button for the accelerator and I just have it mapped to the space key. And then I have to shift my gears. So I just have that for the Z button. And if I want to make a new button, just click button, drag it to where it needs to go. I'm going to click Z because that's where I want it to be. Perfect. Click F10 again. I'm going to resume. So now, see I click space bar and pretty instantly it's revving up the car. All right, all right, all right, Z, okay, we're going, we're going, we're going. Z again. Oh, auto accelerate, leave me alone. And Z, our perfect shift. Come on, one more shift before this ends. Oh, I didn't make it, but I won, it's all good. So even though the graphics are a little bit to be desired, I'm actually very happy with the performance. Um, I've used emulators such as BlueStacks before. And I've actually had a lot of issues in terms of performance with an Android emulator like BlueStacks. But this seems to be a little bit better. I think the quality is a little worse, but performance wise, I'm not really dropping any frames. I'm just experiencing some low resolution and uh, screen tearing at times. What else can you actually do in Prime OS? I mean, of course you can download, you know, anything you want, you know, on the Google Play Store, just about, we'll cover that in a second. But there even is, you know, a standard web browser, Google Chrome. Now, I'll be honest, this web browser isn't fantastic. You're getting a mobile web browser on a desktop. Like, no one really wants a mobile web browser, especially on a desktop, but it works might be a little slow and laggy at times, but it'll definitely get the point across. And it definitely is usable. If we want to try pulling up YouTube, we'll see how that performs. So let's just go to Alley Ridge Media, how to build a go-kart. Let's watch that and takes a tad bit of time to load. I did like the mouse is a little laggy in the web browser. What if I full screen it? Like, it performs, it's all right. Let's see, let's make the quality a little bit better. Sure, this is a little bit of an old video, but I think the quality could be a tad better. But hey, the point is it works. That's just kind of the constant trade off here. It works, but you know, maybe it just doesn't look that great. Now, what about my application here? Um, I wanted to set this up so I can try Magic Jack for business to reply to text messages on a computer. And I actually ran into an issue. Your device isn't compatible with this version. That is quite unfortunate for me. Now, I'll be honest, it just seems to be that app, you know, if I wanted Pandora Music, that seems like it'll work fine. Tinder, you can install that. It constantly is gonna say the app might not be optimized for your device. But the majority of apps that I wanted to try out they were able to install, they worked fine, but uh, it was of course the one reason I wanted to get this working for Magic Jack just didn't work. So guys, that is Prime OS. That is Android on a desktop. Overall, I'm relatively happy with how everything came out. The operating system performs well. Um, I can download a plethora of applications, of games, and some of them might be quirkier than others, depending on how you have to set up the keyboard uh, and controllers and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it leaves a lot of room for you, the consumer, to customize the operating system to exactly fit your needs. So if this is something that you might be interested in trying out, I definitely would recommend Prime OS out of the other ones that I tried. Again, Remix OS doesn't exist. Phoenix OS, I had some issues with. Um, and I will say Prime OS, I actually had issues getting it to install on an AMD uh, desktop. Intel seemed to work fine. AMD, maybe not so much. Maybe it was just my certain chipset. I'm not exactly sure. So your mileage might vary. But guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you tried this out? Will you be trying it out? What would you plan to do with this? Um, I think I might be investigating this a bit further to see maybe I could work on more of a Android console kind of system instead of just a desktop interface, but we shall find out in the future. Anyway guys, I'm Eric and I will catch you in the next video.